Hey, hey people, what's up? It's Jamil. All right, so I just want to put people up some more on my experiences and my journey of uh, getting through gang stalking, beating that, and what I have to offer people who are going through gang stalking. Now, first and foremost, let me start you off by giving you a small tour of how I got to where I am. Okay, <laughs> I had been interested in conspiracies my whole life. I remember as a child, uh, I had watched the movie Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I remember somewhere in the movie, I think in the beginning, they said it was a true story, or somebody told me it was a true story either, or I haven't seen the movie in a long time. Immediately, I went to the library. Now, I'm from Muskegon, Michigan. There's a library down in the hall called Muskegon Hackley Library. And so I go to the library, and I'm about 10, and I'm looking around for information on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I tell the woman working on the thing, she says, well, why are you looking for this? You know, and I lied to her, and I said, it's for school. She said, well, can't you do something else for school? And I say, no, I'll, this is what I'm doing. And so she gives me some information, and it goes back, you know, it links back to some other things that happened that were connected to 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 the story where, you know, the directors had got it from. And at that time, I didn't realize it, but I was just interested in the concepts like that. And so then I became aware of, like, Area 51 um, around the same time and other things. And then my life had, you know, going through my life, I'd always just been interested in conspiracies. It wasn't until about four years ago that I started uh, going to people and recording, uh, you know, recording interviews and stuff like that. And then about two years ago, I had gotten really serious about it. And I just said, well, you know what? It's either now or never, you know? And so I was 28 at the time. Now I'm 30. And so I had did extensive research on the 1960s and 70s, which is my favorite. That's my favorite era. And uh, it, this involved some some unknown um, things that had happened, like the zebra murders, uh, the Zodiac murders are a little more well-known, the Son of Sam murders, um, in general, serial killings like that had gone on in that era. But other things that uh, were big on the list I had covered were the Manson family ordeal uh, up in the Hollywood Hills, the whole Laurel Canyon scene, um, then Jonestown. Jonestown turned out to be my favorite. I loved Jim Jones and the People's Temple. Uh, even today, it's hard not to go look at it, even though I don't look at it anymore. I can't remember the last time I actually went looking about it on the web or going to read a book about it. At this point, I'm no longer a conspiracy research. I moved down in my life, and now I'm teaching people about my experience. But I loved it so much, so much. I used to love to just listen to the recordings of Jim Jones and the People's Temple, and, you know, it was just fascinating. I wanted to really know what happened. And so I said, well, if, if I'm ever going to know... I'm going to have to go out and contact people and do things. And so that's what I did. I went out and I did many interviews with many different people. And I used to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. I'm talking about hours. I, you know, I live at my mother's house and I used to just, just stay inside the house 24-7 um, just studying it. And there was one point, there was one summer in 2012 where I didn't use the internet, television, or telephones, or any type of, anything like that for like three months during the summer. Because I figured, you know, I was just going to stop my conspiracy research and just, like, leave society and all that stuff. But then it turned out, I said, no, nah, I can't do that. I got to go back to it. And so then, it, and so that's where, you know, I continued. But after that, you know, I just stayed. I just stayed just researching, researching. I used to spend, I can't remember how many countless nights I just stayed up looking at all the different blogs about the Manson family, reading books, listening to rare recordings, rare documentaries, just looking, just looking, just looking for the ultimate truth. And what happened was this. I stumbled across information that was was very pacific and then information that was not very pacific, and it turned out to be real. And I didn't realize at the time, but these people and these things are, are connected to, to something much larger. And so, the, like, with the Manson thing, it just turned into, like, the world of Hollywood. That's basically what, you know, that whole thing was with Manson and that movie star and, um... You know, he had lived with the Beach Boys. That was all caught up in the realm of Hollywood at that time in the 60s. And my love for Hollywood is the 1930s to the 1960s. I, I'm not, like, anything past that doesn't really interest me. And so I loved it. I was just like, hell yeah, man. We're going we're gonna to discover everything we can. And so then I, I walked into... See, what you have to remember is these things didn't happen that long ago. 1969 really isn't that long ago. 1978 definitely isn't that long ago. And so the people who were caught up in that era are still around. And this gets into the secret societies. 
that run everything. And so to the average person on YouTube, me just talking and talking and talking, they're not going to know what I'm talking about. Some guy on YouTube who, who's listening to my stuff, he's going to hear me talking, and he might even say this is interesting, but he's not going to know what I'm talking about. Only the people who are behind it all are going to know because they're the ones doing it that did it all. And so the ones who did it all, the secret society, they knew what I was talking about. And then they said, wait a minute, this guy, well, you know, he knows something. What does he know? And so it became a thing where we, I had came into the company of them. And this was the top people. This wasn't, this wasn't you know, your local, uh, your local branch of the Rosicrucians or anything. This, this was like, this was, this, this was real. This was the people who... This wasn't the Central Intelligence Agency. This was the people who run the Central Intelligence Agency. These were the people who put presidents inside the White House. These were the people who aren't in the Vatican, who own the Vatican. And they were very suspicious of me, but they didn't think I had the intellect to actually present it as such. And so I was put in a life-death situation, and I miraculously slipped out of it. At the last minute, for some reason, they had decided to just, just let him go. But... It was very, very, very close, and I thank them for that to this day, you know, to be honest. But, uh, and so getting past that, my life turned into gang stalking for a year. And, well, let me rephrase this. See, most Americans who go through public school system and stuff like that, they don't really know what's out there. When you think of World War II and you think of America beat the Nazis and all stuff, that's not true. Those people still exist. They're still out there. And that's... I had come to something much larger than... Um, I, I got way more than I bargained for. I'll put it like that. And so then my life turned into... So I come... I, I, you know, I go through the whole Hollywood thing. And then I end up coming back... I, I end up coming back to my normal world... Um, in Michigan, and then I'm still out there running my mouth on the internet. So basically, these people are like, man, this guy didn't learn his lesson. You know, we, we could have took him out, and he slipped out of that, and now he's still running his lips. You know, we don't know who, we don't, you know, put him in the gang stalking program. And so I did that for a year. Then I beat the gang stalking thing. Like right now, my goal is just help people 110% no matter what, learn how to get out of it. And I train myself every day to do that. And not just normal people like myself who went through conspiracy, but I'm hoping to get a call. Hey, man, I'm hoping for somebody who really needs it. Somebody somebody like Martin Lawrence or somebody who, uh, like Britney Spears, somebody who needs That's why I'm training for. I'm training to, to be able to really help top people. I might get a call from somebody at, at the FBI. Who, who wants to make a decision that they feel is the right decision, but they're afraid of the consequences. And so they want me to be, you know, they want somebody who actually beat gang stock and they be there to help them get through it. Things like that happen every day. And so that's what I'm training my life for. I mean, I'm, I'm training my life right now. I mean, I want to be up there to get the Nobel Peace Prize, like the only person in the world ever be gang stalking, you know, flat out. And so my life is on a completely positive path right now. And it all came from conspiracy research. And coming, coming from... Uh, Michigan, you know, I, I'm from Norton Shores, Michigan, um, basically Muskegon, Michigan, but now I live in a city called Norton Shores, Michigan, and coming from Norton Shores, Michigan, you, you know, I'm studying conspiracies, and I know all this stuff is real, but it's not until you actually get around the people in the secret societies in person, it's not until you meet these people and you begin to get familiar with this stuff, and then you see, oh my god, I opened a door all the hours I spent laboring to study this stuff, I opened a door that's real. This is real. This isn't about a YouTube video. This is this this is about the real deal. You know, I I I'm looking around and I'm like, my God, these are the people who run the motion picture industry. These are the people who who put the president in the White House. These are the people. You know, these people know who I am. I you know we know each other now. And so my whole life changed. Everything changed. And, and then after the gang stalking thing, I said, my God, what am I going to do now? And so as being groomed, in a sense, I've been groomed by these people. You know, these people have groomed me um, spiritually, psychologically. Like I talk to God every day. I, I'm, I'm working on my fitness right now. I'm, I'm working on my health. I'm working on 
you know, you know, I'm just out there to help people 24 seven. And so I get emails now, somebody emailed me and they saw me with this little camera right here walking around. Um, there's a road right there, old Grand Haven road. I walk down the road and I film and talk to people and stuff like that. Sometimes I haven't done it in, you know, I haven't done it in a while now, but, uh, you know, somebody called, somebody emailed me and said, "Hey, how do I get started doing that? I'm being gangster. I want to do what you do. you just take the camera out and do it. Just go up to people. I just tell them my story. Hey, I did a lot of conspiracy research. I ended up in Hollywood. I uh, got into it with the secret societies and <sighs> beat a life death thing. Now I I went through your gangster. I can beat that. Now I'm just telling people my story, how they can do it. You know, it's just a little camera recorder, and, and that's it." And so, and then somebody else emailed me. They told me they had been in gang stalk since they were a child. That was pretty big to me. You mean it's been happening since you were a child? You know, and so th then there's been, there was other people, there's somebody else who emailed me. And so now it's turning into a thing. I said, I'm the only person with a beacon. Now people are approaching me like that. Like they want, people want help. And so in today's world, people, people don't just need answers. People need something real. You know, and, and I'm not, just I'm looking to be on the internet. I want it to be somebody calls me. That's what I'm training. I'm not training to, to be some guy just talking about stuff. I want to be able to go to a corporation and be able to help the people there who are going through gang stalking because it's it's biggest in the corporate. World. It's you know it's biggest in the corporate world. It's really a form of um extortion. Really, it's extreme intimidation and extortion. And I guess they use that people to get what they want, and and so. You know, I'd like to be able to help people. I'd like to be able to help somebody in Congress who's going through it. I'd be able, you know, and I, you know, I, I mean, to this day, I went to Phoenix not that long ago, and at the hotel I was at, I had top, and I'm not, I'm not misleading anybody. This is for real. I had top Freemasons from London come there and study me in person the whole time I was there. I had real Nazis at the hotel there. Now this is the best Western. This is one step above a crackhead hotel. These people wanted to be around me in person. The things I had went out and did and the things I had went out and said, I had caused a lot of issues behind the scenes, that, that stuff I don't even know I'm familiar with. These, when you're dealing with the most powerful people in the world, they don't like some little guy from some state like Michigan to go and say all this stuff and cause all this trouble. I don't know what, you know, I'm not in these people's lives. I don't know what they have to deal with. I might have caused somebody a lot, a lot more trouble than I could ever know. See what I'm saying? And so these people want to see, like, who is, like, you know, and that was a pretty big deal to me. I'm like, my God, I got it like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got it like that. Started from the bottom, now we're, you know what I'm saying? And so I was like, oh, man, it's cool. And I'm out by the, I'm out by the pool. I'm out, I'd be out by the pool hanging out with them, drinking, drinking coffee and stuff at the hotel, drinking coffee, hanging out at the pool, all that, having fun. But, uh, you know, for people who want to get through gang stalking and beat it, I mean, you can do it. It's all your, it, it, you got to change your experience of it. Stop looking for, like, everything that happened to me, I'm grateful for. You know, like, I looked at gang stalking, like, this is it. I just got to go through this. This is all you got. I'm hungry. Give it to me. This is all you got. If I can get through this, if I can spiritually and psychologically get through this and I beat it, no matter what, 110%. And so that, that's what happened. And so I just want to help people learn about that, you know? You, you, can, you, can, you can get through it no matter what. And so, you know, just contact me. Just, just contact me, Jamil Rawls versus Gangstalking at Gmail, and I'll help you get through it no matter what. Damn it, we're in a storm right now. So I'm going to turn this off in case the power goes out. All right.